Hey everybody, how you doing? This is about to be a really fun video. Here's a scoop. 357 Magnum bolt action. This is my Ruger model 77 357. My first model 77 I found at Tolliver's. I slept on it for like a month. Luckily it was still there. Picked it up, took it home, loved it. Then this came in at Tolliver's. I said, man, I gotta have it. I love the 44 mag version. Gotta have the 357 mag version. I sighted it in several months back in a different video. Tight groups at 100 yards. Can't beat it. And now, fall is here. We're coming up on rifle season for deer catching. This one is gonna be on the roster for a couple different hunts where I know we're gonna be hunting thicker woods, maybe doing some blind hunting. Not blind like, oh, we can't see, but blind like a hunting blind, you know, little hunting hut where I know the shots are going to be in close. These 77s are handy little lightweight rifles that we could haul way back in there in the thick stuff if we needed to. So whole purpose of today, I'm going to make sure that this is still sighted in. I'm going to do some calculations on drop levels and energy. So I know the energy and drop at different distances, depending on where the deer pop up, show you guys all that information. Um, it'll be all posted on the interwebs forever for all to know. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool. I forget what Ruger calls this stock. Uh, but these 77s are all limited editions. They don't make very many of them. So shout out to Tolliver's for finding me this. The 357 came with iron sights. Um, I got that one flipped down because I got the scope on here. Threaded barrels. This is my Banish 46 can on there. That's a sweet can. Uh, but yeah, lightweight little rigs that we can haul way back in somewhere, any, anywhere we got close range uh, shots on deer. It'd be cool for hogs too. We don't have hogs around where I live, but that's the whole point of this video. Make sure for me that it's sighted in so when I take it out, we can catch some deer with it and do the calculations on the energy to get a, a good judge of how far we should take it um, and to have the drops in my noggin and share that with you if you were to hunt with one too. We're gonna to chronograph them. Uh, yeah, let's get right to it. We'll put the targets down here. We'll start slinging them and get all the data to you and me. Be right back. All right, here we go. So, it's 357 mag. Uh, I love it, if you couldn't tell already. But it's not doing us any good if it's not sighted in. Let me straighten up my chronograph here. And let's send them. Uh, let's, I got four in the magazine. I'm interested to see the speeds. I forget what they are out of this. The box says 180 grain at what? 1,090? This is going to be quite a bit faster than this, I believe. Uh, here we go. Center target. Do my best here. I didn't tell you, but this scope is on... Uh, older Bushnell off of something that I picked up. This is like ancient. What is it? It's a Bushnell Elite 3200. There's two people watching the video said, that's not ancient. Uh, that's good stuff. A lot of people have actually tried to get this scope off of me, but it's just a takeoff of something else I bought used. And it's got 12 zoomies. It's a four to 12. It's pretty good for a 357. Anyways, let's send one quick. Center target. That one hit center, but a tad low. Almost 1,500 feet a second. I'll show you guys all the speeds out of this here in a minute. Let's do a group of three here. Those are touching. I'm telling you, this thing is money. These Model 77s are sweet. I got four of them, all in different cartridges. Yeah, so that's gonna be like a half inch group. I'll measure that with the calipers here in a second, but it looks to be a little low, doesn't it? Is that a full inch low? It is hitting a full inch low. So that being said, let me bring it up. Assuming this is in my way. One click is a quarter inch, so let's bring that dude up. 
yeah. And then, where's that brass? I'm gonna save that brass. There we go. And just to verify, I can still hit a small target. I actually set the camera so you can see my steel. I got a four inch piece of Caldwell AR500 down there. And uh, let's hit that steel down there. Verify that my adjustment just was good. We can hit a four inch piece of steel at a hundred. We can hit a deer hard at a hundred. You know what I mean? I'm gonna verify it because it looks like I hit the steel on the bottom of it. So I'm gonna send one at the top left target if I can ever get this mag out. Top left target, let me send one just to verify. We gotta have this absolutely dead on for deer catching. Just a shade low. I'm gonna bring it two clicks up again. Normally I'd call it good just right here. Uh, but since we're using this for deer season, uh, and I'm probably going to be guiding people and letting them use this, um, we got to have it dead nuts on. I'm not going to be liable for somebody missing the deer. Man, you let me use that thing. That sucker way off. I miss that deer. No, nah, man. Here's a video of it. It's dead on, man. You know what I mean? We'll send one more. Top left. Same target as the last one. Ah, it went in the same hole. Let's send one more. <sighs> this might be a dud of a scope, huh? Nah, I sighted it in. It's good. Uh, it moves like it's supposed to, but... I'm splitting hairs right here, adjusting for half an inch, but... Like I said, I just like to be... I just like precision, okay? Especially when it comes to us doing some serious deer hunting, which is what we're using this for next. Uh, so stay tuned on the channel. Don't jump yet. I still gotta make all the tables for energy and bullet drop stuff. We're gonna do that here in a second, but I just wanna be 100% confident in this thing instead of 99%. All right, that one kissed the bullseye. So we're not touching this. I already put the scope cap on. Uh, let me find that other piece of brass here. Here we go. So real quick, let me go turn my camera off downrange or that file's gonna be ginormous. 10 minutes in 4K. Uh, and then I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna build a drop chart, an energy chart, and we'll talk about it. Be interesting information, valuable stuff if you got a 357. Uh, be right back. All right, so a couple quick things to go over here. You just saw it 100 yards, sucker's dead on. This 77 357 with this core locked handgun, money. I just measured that first group that was an inch low. That's less than a half inch group. That's a 0.49 inch group. Then I did two in the same hole and then I did another adjustment and got a bullseye. So we're not touching this thing till we catch a deer with it. but. Just got the numbers, okay? Let me bring you in here and show you some numbers real quick. Uh, SD of 8.6 on that stuff, guys. That is good. Single digit SD with seven shots. Average speed is 1487 feet per second. Man. So you can see there, low SD, uh, seven shots. Good stuff. Uh, but here's the numbers I'm using. For my calculations, you can see the muzzle velocity. The G1BC, Remington doesn't list it, but it's gotta be between a 0.2 and a 0.23, just going off of a bunch of other information that's in my head. Height over bore is a 0.15. I just measured that with the calipers and it's 180 grain jacketed hollow point. So after boop, 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 putting all those numbers in, dead on at 100, remember, these numbers I'm fixing to show you, I'm gonna pop it up right here or if you're sighted in at 100 yards. The energy levels are gonna be the same, but the drop is if you're sighted in at 100. So, let's look at drop first. 
Uh, what's cool about this, anywhere between zero and 100, you can hold dead on, really 120. So say the deer's at 20 yards. The elevation adjustment is only 0.29 inches off. So 20 yards is a dead on hold, 40 yards. Your hold would be 1.38 inches off. So you can still hold dead on through all this. 60 yards, you're 1.7 inches off. 80, we're coming back dead on there at 100. 120, it's dropping two inches. 140, it's dropping 5.3 inches. 160, nine and a half. You can see the numbers here out to 200 yards. It's dropping 21 inches. Probably wouldn't be deer hunting with this one at 200 yards. Uh, I hadn't looked at any of these numbers until just now when I calculated them. So at the muzzle, that 180 grainer going 1487 feet per second at the muzzle, it has 884 foot pounds of energy. Go on to 40, it's got 757. 60 yards, it's got 702. 80 yards, 653. At 100 yards where my target was there, it's got 608 foot pounds of energy, then out to 200 where it's slowing down, it's got 453 foot pounds of energy. So I know there's gonna be people saying, oh, that 357, that's not good enough for deer. Okay, um, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, uh, but I am gonna take this thing deer hunting. It is gonna be close quarters deer hunting. Okay, so don't get all crazy at me in the comments, but now I know the numbers, zero to 100, Zero to 120, really, we can do dead on holds um, and we'll be good to go. I wouldn't be hunting with it further than that anyways. Uh, we got plenty of other better options for 120 yards and out uh, as far as catching deers go. But it is my goal to take deer and have knowledge of everything uh, and share all that with you guys. Appreciate you watching. Let me know in the comments if you have ever taken deer with 357, whether that be with a revolver or with something like a bolt action or a lever action, okay? This thing's awesome. You can see, man, it's a laser and this is a precision instrument. My only complaint with the 77s is the triggers are on the heavy side, which could be good depending on how you look at it, uh, but they're, they're too heavy. We can do good groups with it, but it's just too heavy. And now there's going to be a hundred comments that say, man, you can put a trigger kit in it. I don't really like fooling with that stuff. Um, if it's, if it's meant to be easily adjustable, I'll turn it all the way down. Like a bunch of bolt action rifles. It's easy to turn them down. If it's goofy and you got to swap the springs and you flip the doodad upside down and take a big pin and use that spring. I, I'm not getting into that hanky panky stuff. Um, uh, too much risk of me messing something up doing all that when I can already get half inch groups with it as it is. But anyways, now I'm rambling. Appreciate y'all, stay tuned. I can almost guarantee you we're gonna drop a deer with this thing this season. Uh, we're just waiting on rifle season. Appreciate y'all, we'll see you on the next one. Make sure you're subscribed. We'll see y'all on the next one. Hootie hoo.